so good afternoon to all today in this lecture we are going to see in the last lecture we have seen the scada functions okay in a introductory manner so today we are going to see how these functions work in a deep manner okay so we have already seen these functions can be performed by using the these devices okay now we are going to see the functions in deep first function is data acquisition okay so the systems you need to monitor are much more complex in an industry okay than just one machine with one output so a uh, practical scada system needs to monitor hundreds or thousands of sensor at a time some sensors measures input into the system for example water flowing into a reservoir and some sensors measure output like pressure valve as water is released from the reservoir so two types of sensors first one measures the input to the system for example right now we can uh, monitor there is a website for of government of india or government of maharashtra which monitors the inlet flow to the reservoir and outlet flow of the reservoir okay by using the scada system and data acquisition and also rtu so sensors are installed on the dam in order to measure the level of the water reserved so according to the level the percentage of the capacity of the dam is determined and uh, this is about the input and second one is the measurement of output sensors like valve pressure means opening and closing of the door how many feet or how many meters the doors has been opened or closed okay so that is given so some of those sensors measure simple events that can be detected by a straight forward or on off switch okay manual switch called a discrete input for example uh, in simple model of a fabricator widget fabricator the switch that turns on light would be a discrete input so in real life discrete inputs are used to measure simple states like whether the equipment is on or off or trip wire alarms like powerful failure at a critical facility okay so some sensor measures more complex situations where exact measurement is important so these are analog sensors which can detect continuous changes in voltage or changes in current input so analog sensors are used to track the fluid level in tanks voltage level in batteries then temperature and other factors that can be measured in a continuous range of input so for the most of analog factors there is a normal range so that normal range is defined by a bottom and top level okay two levels are there first one is top and then second one is bottom so for example you may you are going to temperature means you may want the temperature in a server room to stay between 60 and 85 degrees fahrenheit okay so if the temperature goes below or above this range this will trigger a threshold alarm okay if it goes below 60 means 59 58 or 86 87 it will trigger a threshold alarm so in more advanced systems there are four threshold alarms for analog sensors okay so defining major under minor under minor over or major over alarms for example major under means 59 58 minor major under means below 50 or even below 55 minor under means just slight change 59 58 
and minor over means above 85 means 87 will up to 90 degree Fahrenheit and major over alarms uh, example is above 90 95 etc now the second function we are going to see is the data communication so let's consider the previous model of that is widget fabricator the network is just the wire leading from the switch to the panel light okay so in a real life you want to be able to monitor some multiple systems from a central location so uh, you need a communications network for that to transport all the data collected from your sensors and the sensors data is given to the data communication port so early SCADA networks communicated over radio or modem or dedicated serial lines okay but today the trend is to put the SCADA data on the ethernet and IP over sonnet okay IP addresses and ethernet so for security reasons SCADA data should be kept on closed local access network or wireless access networks without exposing sensitive data to the open internet okay because of privacy so real SCADA systems don't communicate with just simple electric signals okay either SCADA data is so SCADA data is encoded in protocol format okay is it, it is encoded like a crypt cryptocurrency and other encoded files so older SCADA systems dependent on closed proprietary protocols but today the trend is to open the standard protocols and protocol mediation okay so sensors and control relays are very simple electric devices that can't generate or interpret protocol communication on their own so therefore the remote terminal unit is needed to provide an interface between the sensors and the SCADA network okay so RTU does this work thus the RTU encodes sensor inputs into protocol format and then it forward them to the SCADA master so in turn the RTU receives control commands in protocol format so from the master and then transmit back electrical signals to the appropriate control relays okay this is what is performed in data communication using RTUs and SCADA next one is data presentation so the only display element in our SCADA model system is the light that comes on when the switch is activated okay so this is obviously uh, won't do on a large scale okay you can't track a light board of thousand separate lights and you don't want to pay someone simply to watch a light board okay simple task so real SCADA system reports to the human operators over a specialized computer that is called as a master station or HMI human machine interface the best example of HMI is your ATM okay ATM machine HMI or HCI human computer in interface okay machine may be computer it, it's normally computer okay so you can give input to the user interface and you can get the details about the conditions of the machines or the devices so the SCADA master station has several different functions okay so the master continuously monitors all the sensors and alerts the operator when there is an alarm so for example in case of reserve wire in case of coin dam there is a RTU sensor at the top of the dam to measure the level of the reserve wire okay how much it is filled and if the measurement goes beyond the specified level for example um, the coin is about 82 meter high 
so if water reservoir level goes above 80 it will give an alarm okay so that is what the master system does okay it alerts the operator when there is an alarm okay the alarm signal is given by the RTO RTO send it back to the by through wireless LAN or uh, WAN to the network and that is given to the operator so that is when a control factor is operating outside what is defined as its normal operation okay the master presents a comprehensive view of the entire managed system and it presents more detail in response to the user request okay so this master also performs data processing on information which are being collected from the sensors and also it maintains reports and logs and summarizes historical trends okay and advanced SCADA master can add a great deal of the intelligence and automation to your systems management making your job much easier okay so now this point it maintains reports logs and summarizes historical trends uh, in the further lecture we are going to see it in the real time application by our Maharashtra government which is uh, monitoring different dams on the Krishna river basin and Bhima river basin okay we are going to see how it is how it summarizes it reports the logs and also it gives historical trends to us okay next and last is the control so our miniature SCADA system monitoring the widget fabricator okay doesn't include any control element so when we add one so let's say the human operator has a button on his control panel okay so when he presses that button it activates a switch on the widget fabricator that brings more widgets into the fabricator okay now if we add a full computerized control of SCADA master unit that controls the entire factory or industry so you know you now have a control system that responds to input elsewhere in the system so if the machine that make widget parts break down you can slow down or stop the widget fabricator so if the fabricator if the part fabricators are running efficiently you can speed up the widget fabricator so if you have any sufficiently sophisticated master unit this control can run completely automatically without the need of human control or intervention so and also of course uh, you can still manually override the automatic controls from the master station also in real life SCADA systems automatically regulate all kinds of industrial process for example if too much pressure is building up in a gas pipeline the SCADA system can automatically open a release valve because it is programmed in that way also electricity production can be adjusted to meet the demands on the power grid if the demand is low the power generation will okay regulate or it will uh, stay as it is even in this real world examples are simplified a full scale SCADA system can adjust the managed system in response to multiple inputs okay this is what we have seen the functions which are data acquisition network data communication data presentation and the control in a deep format okay with the help of widget fabricator example okay now next part is the SCADA hardware we have seen these all parts regarding the okay software related now we are going to see how the hardware are introduced okay so first one is so first hardware is RTU remote terminal units okay so a SCADA system consists of a number of remote terminal unit okay so which collects the field data and then sending that data back to a master station via communication organization so if the master station so then the master station displays the collected data and it allows 
the operator to perform remote control task of controlling the motor or turning off on on the motor okay or task so the accuracy so accurate and timely data allows for optimization of the plant operation and process also uh, benefits include more efficient reliable and most importantly safer operations so this uh, all things result in a lower cost of operation compared to earlier non automated system okay which includes the optimize the data hmm? accurate data or optimize data for the optimization of plant operation and process rtus data communication etc okay these are more advantages than that of the non automated systems so scada system essentially have five levels or hierarchies okay so we are going to see it so first is the field level instrumentation and control devices so these are basically analog and digital sensors which are situated at each of the remote site okay next one is marshalling terminals and rtus so these are nothing but it provides interface to the field devices okay you can manage your devices this field devices by using this rtus next one is communication systems so as we all know communication systems perform the backbone of scada so the widely used systems are wire or fiber optic radios telephone lines microwave and even possibly satellites okay so specific protocols and error detection techniques are used for efficient and optimum transfer of data for communications between the master station and the remote sites okay so next one is master stations so the master station does gather the data from various rtus which provide an operator interface for display of information and control the remote sites by using the sensing of the quantities last one is information technology applications so the commercial information technology or data processing department computer system this is this includes it data processing department okay now we are going to see scada hardware hardware functions so there are many functions of scada some of them are given below first one is already we have seen this data collection is very important then data transfer data processing then information display and last one is control action so this is nothing but a feedback loop okay in which input is your sensors okay after that after that data collection from the sensors through rtu and communications then data transfers okay and then data processing and after that information display of the data and then control actions required to be taken now we are going to have a look on the dif uh, the description of a remote terminal units okay the detail view so as we all know that rtu means remote terminal units it is a stand alone data acquisition and control unit okay generally microprocessor based or ic based which uh, monitors and controls equipment at some remote location from the central station okay central station is nothing but your master station okay so primary task of this rtu is to control and acquire data from process equipment at the remote location and to transfer this data collected back to the central station also it generally has the facility for having its configuration and control programs dynamically downloaded from some central station okay you can modify it there is also a facility to be configured locally by some rtu programming unit although traditionally the rtu communications back to back okay the rtu communicates back to back back some central station it is also possible to communicate 
on a peer to peer basis with other rtus okay the rtu can also act as a relay station to another rtu okay which may not be accessible from the central station so this will act as a communication between the rt which is not accessible to the master station the rtu provides interface to the field analog and digital sensors situated at the remote sites okay these are instrumentation sensors and rtu provides interface to that also the communication systems provide the pathways for communication between the master station and the remote sites so the communication system communication systems can be wire or fiber optics okay radio we have seen this already now the master station okay gather data from different rtus and generally provide an operator interface for display of information and control of the remote sites so in large telemetry systems the sub master sites gather information from remote sites and act as a relay back to the control master station okay secondary master station so small sized rtus generally have less than 10 to 20 analog and digital signals and medium size have 100 digital signals and 430 to 40 analog inputs so rtus having a capacity greater than this can be classified as large rtus okay having greater capacity than 30 to 40 analog inputs now we are going to have a look on rtu hardware so rtu hardware what is con what is consist of so the rtu hardware consist of a different sets of input then outputs memory and communications okay so inputs are analog input then counter input and digital input outputs are analog and digital memory systems are static and dynamic memory okay then control processor and associated memory and last one the communications and other equipments are communication interface then power supply which is required for rtu then rtu rack and enclosure okay so now we are going to see how it operates basic principle of operation so the rtu will operate scanning its input okay normally at a fast rate it will scan the input it may do some processing such as change of state processing then time stamping of changes also storage of the data from the scada master okay so some rtus have the capability to initiate reporting to the scada master master site okay the rtu may do some alarm processing also okay so when it is polled by scada master the rtu must respond to the request which may be as simple as give me all your data okay this is what your command from the master station to a complex control function to be executed so rtus are specialty devices manufactured often by small suppliers in batches okay batches are of little of 100 okay they are made for markets okay at the smaller end and can be subjected to intense cost pressure therefore not all the rtus supports all functionality okay larger rtus may be capable of processing hundred of inputs and even controlling smaller sub rtus as we seen earlier therefore these are obviously more expensive so the processing power of an rtu ranges from a small 8 bit processor with minimal memory to a large sophisticated rcu capable of time stamping to milliseconds accuracy okay limit less uh, the lower limit is small bit small 8 bit processors and the higher limit is time stamping data to millisecond accuracy okay now difference between plc and rtu so it's not 
much different plc is a small industrial computer which replaced relay logic okay so it has inputs and output similar to that of rtu also it contained a program which execute a loop then scan the inputs and take actions based on the inputs also originally the plc had no communications capability but uh, they began to be used in situations where communications was a desirable feature okay but our rtu have always been used in situation where the communications are more difficult okay so if communication is less difficult we can use plc communication is more difficult we can use rtus and the rtu strength was its ability to handle the diff difficult communications so rtus originally had poor programmability in comparison to the plcs so in case of programming is required we are going to use plc if less programming is required we are going to use rtus okay now we will going to have a look on the feature different features of a scada what does scada does okay first one is alarm handling okay it has precision of 1 millisecond of alarm handling okay it also acknowledges single network and uh, with sharing and displaying of alarms to all clients in a chronological order okay it also keep tracks of deviation and a rate of change of monitoring for analog alarms okay also it has the option of historical alarm i mean and also event logging also it is capable of performing online alarm okay and uh, disable the threshold modifications okay next one is trend curves okay trending curves and patterns of uh, trending zooming and display of data it performs export and ar archive of historical trend data okay previous datas with event based trends for short and long term displays also it has the option of online change of time base and retrieval of archived historical data next one is real time access and archiving and database management okay which is done by direct sql command and it has also network dd e capability for read write and execution with all input output devices and last one is computer networking and processing computer networking processing aspect of all supports with compatible networks and protocols okay it has centralized alarm then trade trend and report processing okay also data available from anywhere in the network and the dual network for full and redundancy okay now the last part of this chapter that is application of scada so scada is used in different entities like electric power generation transmission distribution for uh, detection of current flow line voltage to monitor operation of different circuit breakers and to take sections of the power grid online or offline okay then wastewater utilities and sewage a municipal corporation uses the scada extensively for reservoir levels pipe pressure okay and then sewage levels okay then building facilities and environments so facility managers use scada to control hvac means heating ventilation and air conditioning refrigeration units and lighting and energy systems then oil and gas distributors transport distributors wind generation okay communication networks industrial plants and process controls okay then manufacturing of mechanical products scada is extensively used in that also in railway traction scada is used to regulate electricity to the subways then trams and trolley buses okay also to automate the traffic signals for the railway systems etc 
and last one is the traffic signals okay also we can use SCADA system to monitor the traffic and according to the trend it will uh, put on the lights okay so SCADA in our electrical system SCADA is widely used in power systems it is increasing application day by day okay some of the applications are operational planning and control of power systems then fuel resourcing and rescheduling also then optimum power flow of the power system network security economic dispatch generation dispatch control okay now benefits of SCADA in power system first one is improved quality of service then improved reliability okay it makes the system more reliable reduce operating cost operating cost reduces then uh, maintenance of customer base can be done then high value service provides okay and we can also add VES that is value added services by using SCADA and then improved information of, of for the decisions then uh, we can also incorporate flexible billing option by using SCADA then also improved customer information access okay by using RTUs and different sensors we can give the current demand maximum demand present demand information to the customer okay and different tariffs then reduced system implementation cost and uh, manpower is also reduced when the monitoring is done by SCADA so this up to 0.4.3 is what is required in for uh, according to our syllabus and uh, this is what is being asked up to the exam for your same first and semester exam first and also for end same exam so do watch this video and refer this PDF that have been uploaded in your teams for the MCQs and subjective questions. Okay. So till then take care. Goodbye and have a nice day.